Hi guys, welcome back to another honest smartphone review. Hi guys, this is Stephen Fox again. Thank you for coming back to Smartphone Walls and today I have for you Meizu M5C review. Is the Meizu M5C any good? Watch my review and as always you'll find out. This is Meizu's cheapest device to date and as such it's not a flagship killer, it's not a killer in specs but it does have some good things going for it like cameras and audio experience but I'll get to that a bit later. Now when it comes to design and build quality I wasn't expecting much since this is a sub $100 phone and it really is in the price category. It's all plastic uh, but at least the buttons are not clicky. The M5C is a sub $99 device and as such it's made of plastic it's not very cheap plastic, it's okay to the touch, the phone is very light, the buttons do not feel clicky and uh, after using it for a few days I've uh, actually forgotten what it's like to carry a very small phone with me which is light and compact. Uh, so it, the handling is really easy and nice on this device. If you're definitely on the hunt for a smaller phone and cheap as well, you should definitely take a look at the M5C. It does look very much okay, the bezels are a bit thicker than I would like, although it is, as I said, a very very low cost phone. This is a super light device because it's made of good plastic, so it really is for those who like a lighter and smaller phone since this is just 5 inches. Yes, we've come to this, this is a very small phone, 5 inches is a very small phone these days. When it comes to the C for cheap, yes, it's a cheaper phone and uh, Meizu have really opted not to put a fingerprint scanner in there. So this home button here, I usually originally thought it's a fingerprint scanner. No, it's not. It's just it's just a regular button. So you have to go back to doing um, patterns and pin codes if you want better security on it. Yes, it is a Meizu phone, of course. So it's running Flyme OS. At least Meizu haven't spared you anything of the software quirks. This is full Flyme OS with all the features that you get even in more expensive phones. So this is a very very capable software package. It is running a global ROM which means that uh, your language is probably in there. It has uh, lots of languages which you can choose for the interface. Again very very nice software experience. I do like Flyme OS. If you haven't tried it, I do suggest this is one of the skins you definitely should try. And uh, it does have more features than you know. Although it's still running Android Marshmallow, it does have split screen multitasking and screen recording as well, since it may as well have that before. LT bands supported, you can see here. 38, 40, band 20, 1, 3, 7 and 8 are supported. Uh, let's take a look at the specs. This is a quad-core MTK chip when you get 1.3 GHz and 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of storage. The RAM management on the Flyme OS is much better than Xiaomi's MIUI, at least to my opinion. So this 2 GB RAM phone does actually perform very well with lots of apps on the background, but the CPU is quite limited as well as the storage speed. But at least the cameras could prove to be very good since so they both have f2.0 aperture and this have all the sensors you need you can view 360 videos on it and help navigation. Another area that Amazon M5C really excels from the competition below $100 is definitely the display quality it's really much better than anything on the market at this price range. If there's one area that I really like cheaper phones to be better at, it's the display and camera quality and luckily Meizu provide a good style with the display. Very vivid and accurate colors, uh, the blacks are deep, um, as I said colors are very accurate and 
punchy as well sunlight visibility is rather okay now this device does not come with any gorilla glass so uh, i think it has some sort of protection on it but definitely uh, get a screen protector for it because it will scratch if you put it with your keys and flyme os this provide very good customization options such as uh, free wallpapers and online teams as well so very good customization options on the M5C. Another very good area for the Meizu M5C which really excels again from the competition is the audio quality, the call quality, the speaker volume, speaker quality and headphone quality is really much much better than anything even after $150 price. I even think the speakers are better than Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 X. Area, if there's one area that the Meizu M5C is really a very good choice, it's the camera department. Both cameras are very good for the price. You won't find better cameras in a sub $100 phone on the market at all. Usually cheap phones have very, very horrible cameras. And uh, I am very pleased uh, and I was very hoping for Meizu to do an uh, okay camera phone for sub $100 and they have both front and main camera provide very satisfying results in okay and good lighting conditions and the main camera does also have a pro mode but you can't adjust exposure so this is something they've skipped although you can still get a very good shot out of it you can also adjust uh, your light exposure on the fly with the slider as said no software features have been missing besides the uh, second exposure on the shutter speed setting in the manual mode but picture quality is very good uh, dynamic range is very good on the device even some low light shots look okay there's far less noise than any other 99 dollar phone you get on the market right now colors are very accurate with the camera i was i also get very very good shots with this uh, device as you can see here on a good or a cloudy kind of day indoors as well there is some overblown images uh, behind and there's too much light if this gets overexposed a bit but as I said colors are very accurate and you will definitely most of the times get a better shot than with any $120 phone or below with the Meizu M5C very very capable cameras for the price and as I said you can look at the night shots also are very pleasing to the eye but just don't go expecting anything, you know, above $200 price class at this phone. But cameras are capable. Now on to the video quality. Uh, it's usable, but uh, definitely a bit shaky as you might expect. The microphone is a bit too sensitive. And it's only HD. The front camera, as, as I mentioned, as the main camera delivers an excellent experience, good beauty modes, uh, very very good selfies in good lights even in poor light conditions, definitely okay for social medias and this is something that a lot of uh, cheap phones can't really offer on the market right now so if you're looking, if the main thing you're concerned about when you want to get a cheap phone is to have good front and main camera I think the Meizu M5C will definitely suffice your needs I've gotten worse selfies with much more expensive phones so because of the f2.0 aperture both cameras really do excel even in lower lighting conditions hi guys here i'm testing the front cam video of the Meizu m5c this just comes out well this is perspective a bit it's a very busy work area so hopefully we'll catch how the mic forms now this phone is advertised with very very good battery life but that's really not the case. The battery life is very okay. You will get around 45 hours of regular usage, you know, on a heavy usage day uh, on this device. But using all of the GPS, uh, especially, really drains the battery very much. And if you're doing any gaming at all, it really does 
as well drain the battery quite quickly. It's a very good phone when it comes to listening music, browsing and watching videos though you'll get around 6 hours of screen on time if you're doing mostly that. Battery life is not an issue but I was expecting a bit more since the quad core MTK6727 is a very small chip and it's definitely built mostly for efficiency. Now I've had this phone running on performance mode all the time but on balance mode believe me it's far too slow for you to use and I was frustrated by it so I definitely recommend using the performance mode all the time. On the device as such uh, when you're listening to music the battery lasts for a long time. When you're watching videos, especially from the internal storage, you get very good uh, screen on time. But um, watching videos on YouTube, especially on 4G and doing uh, a lot of like gaming on it, uh, especially media streaming, this drained the battery a lot. Benchmarks prove that this phone is definitely not a flagship worthy in terms of specs. Uh, one thing that really bothers me is that uh, Meizu opted for slower storage and it, you really can't tell any app above 1050 megabytes installs very slow and I'm especially if you're talking about huge games like uh, a gigabyte and more you'll definitely have to wait quite a bit. Uh, media streaming apps with lots of news feeds like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram uh, loads a bit slower on the device and experience frequent jobs when moving to the news as you see here but this is normal on most phones browsing is actually very good uh, it was much better the phone did much better browsing than it did with social medias so the chip is at least a very okay for browsing and as I said you can do split screen multitasking and the run management is quite good so you can have um, 8 10 apps open in the background without any problems the phone does not lack that much on it uh, and it's not reload too much apps and you can use split screen multitasking as well just expect to have slowdowns especially with uh, heavy apps like uh, Tumblr or messaging heavy apps with video like uh, Messenger and Instagram. See the second app takes quite some time to load and it does get slower. 3D intensive apps like Google Maps take a real toll on the device. It does feel a bit sluggish when navigating to Google Maps 3D. Uh, environment uh, since it's just a single core GPU and when it comes to gaming if you're not playing very light games like uh, this tempo run game here you'll definitely experience lots of slowdown and lags even there's some little slowdowns here as well so this is not a recommended gaming phone at all yes for no very light casual gamers it's okay any 2d game of course will run very well on this device but uh, heavier 3d games such as this asphalt nitro and like Asphalt 8, definitely a no-go, choppy and with very, very low frame rate. So you reached my conclusion with the Meizu M5C. And what I can tell is this, if you're looking for a small phone with okay battery life and you definitely want capable cameras and very good audio quality for headphones and speaker volume and call quality, the Meizu M5C beats any device on the market. But if you're looking for a performance daily driver, I would definitely stay away from the Meizu M5C if I were you. Thank you for watching my Meizu M5C review. This has been Stephen Fox. I hope I've helped you into picking or not picking a Meizu M5C since this is what I aim to do with all of my reviews. Be sure to hit that bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload a video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And if you want to know anything else about the Meizu M5C, leave a comment below. I'm always there for you and I'm always happy to help. Yeah. Stick around.